Gracious Lord, we thy children have gathered to worship you, to say you are my Lord, Lord Jesus, knowing that you are the fairest of the ten thousand to my soul. Lord, I have come to worship you, Jesus. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to us. For we are hungry for your word. Your word can quench our thirst. Your word can feed our hunger. And make us, Lord, children leading a life of witness, leading a life as your lovely children. Here are your daughters and sons this evening, Lord. For the first time they gathered here to worship you in English, Lord Jesus. What a joy it is, Lord, that your children long to worship you, even in this wonderful international language. Bless us, Lord. Bless us. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. What a joy it is to worship for the first time in English. We call it an English service. When our Troyagaru told me that this is the first time that they are having a worship in English, my heart was filled with joy. I gave glory to God and I really thankful to God for giving you that motivation and that inspiration and the thought of having you know this worship in English and no doubt you are such a wonderful pastor who welcomes it your desire your dream and your longing of worshiping in English you know I really appreciate Amit Raiga for you know honoring the desire and respecting their dreams and their wishes and allowing them to worship the Lord Jesus in English. Congratulations to you and congratulations to all of you. And before I, we go into the word of God, I one thing the Lord wants to say that he is very happy today because you are worshiping in another lovely international language. So the Lord is really proud of you all. The Lord rejoices over you all. And this evening, well, Sunday is a day off and everybody wants to spend time with a lot of entertainments, with a lot of other, other activities and many people try to, you know, hook up with so many other things. But you wanted to tie up yourself with the Lord Jesus in this particular time. In TV, evening time is a prime time. And 7 o'clock is still more prime, prime time, it's almost most expensive time. So, you people, you want to give the most expensive time for Jesus. So, you want to give the best time to Jesus. May the good Lord give you the best thoughts when you worship here this evening. And no wonder, I do not know how much God wanted us to be here on this first inauguration of your English worship. And he also called Shita Michael and myself, you know, I don't know whether we will be here this night as milligrams or cinegrams. You know, God, God knows. So thank you for inviting us, Amrut Raigaru. And we indeed are privileged to be in this wonderful worship. Thank you. This evening no wonder everybody has some passion. Some people have passion for dress. Some people have passion for gold. Some people have passion for cars. Some young people have passion for motorcycles. Some people have passion of, you know, mobiles. Keep changing the mobiles. You know, different series come. Whatever series they come, you want to keep changing your passion. That's all. Everybody has a passion. I have a passion of going around and seeing different places. 
you know, equally my wife passion is also same. Like we want to go to many places. We want to see the wonders of you know the beauty of the whole. You know that's the reason. If we have everybody has a passion. And today, let's see what the passion of Jesus does. You know, people in the midst of different passions, you know, what is the passion of Jesus? Because the same passion Jesus wants in us also. The passion that Jesus had this night, God wants every one of us to have that same passion. He wants to shift your passion today from one thing to the other thing. You know, you might be wondering, definitely everyone sitting here, you definitely have some passion. And just think about what kind of a passion you have. Some people have passion for job. Some people have passion for studies. They have nothing except the books. They always want to tie up themselves with the books. Some people have passion to the computers. Every thing. But today, the good Lord passion, let's see what's the passion of Jesus Christ. Turn your Bibles to Luke chapter 18, verses 35 to 43. There you see, you know, Jesus walking, you know, imagine what was he doing? Jesus was walking, he was approaching Jericho. Actually, he was not going to Jericho. He had to further move to Jerusalem. His passion was something where he was going to Jerusalem and he was going to Jericho. Never had an intention of stopping at Jericho. Jesus never, never had an intention or plan to stop at Jericho. But his plan was to go to Jerusalem. Why? Jesus was going to Jerusalem to celebrate the Passover. And not just Jesus, you see in verse 36, there are so many people traveling with Jesus Christ. There was a big crowd walking with Jesus. Imagine, what, where are this crowd going? They were also going to Jerusalem to Passover. To celebrate the Passover. And now you see another fellow coming in, in this whole story. That is a blind beggar. You know, imagine his status is written. He's blind. Physical status is he's blind. And what is his social status? A beggar. A physical condition is blind. And the social status is he is a beggar. Well, everyone on this world has a name. There is nobody without a name. No wonder this beggar also had a name. But his name is not written. Which means he is an insignificant person. He is not something great personality. He was not a political leader. He was not a rich man. He was not a big officer. He was not a, not a well-known, popular fellow. He's not a celebrity in your language. He's not celebrating. That's why his name is not written, which means he's totally an insignificant person. But his blindness, his physical problem is written there. His social status as a beggar is written there. Now, he heard the sounds of the crowd feet, the walking of the crowd, the footsteps of the crowd. He only heard, he can't see, he can't see the crowd. But all that he could realize through the footsteps of the crowd, he could hear the murmurings of the crowd. In a big crowd, there the word he is written, a crowd. This blind fellow heard the murmur of the people and he asked somebody, Hey, what's going on there? Why, never I heard so much, you know, crowd walking this road. Never I heard this big sound or the footsteps. Never I heard about the murmurs of these people. What is this? 
imagine what the people told this man was exactly you know he was 37 was they told him jesus of nazareth is passing by this is what you need to learn now they were telling him that jesus of nazareth is passing by but why but why they were all crowd following him why do the crowd follow him because when people usually go to celebrate passover the people follow a religious leader why do they follow a religious leader because while going to the passover all along the road they keep hearing the religious leader what he was making them understand He was telling people that the religious leader tells some spiritual, you know, mysteries. The spiritual leaders enlighten their minds about various things, so the great unsaid truths can be heard while they were passing on the road to the just him. So this crowd also were following Jesus to hear something great words and great thoughts. and great ideas from the lord jesus christ this is a crowd that was only longing to know something imagine that's the reason why i'm saying they were following jesus as a guru they were only following jesus as a master that's why they said jesus of nazareth well Ruben of Karimala who are you in the bishop of Karimala so they didn't want to really put jesus in the way he has to be put people crowd was saying hey is jesus of nazareth and when this blind person realized now the great thing comes up what does he cry Son of David, he says. The blind fellow says, "You are not my master, but you are my messiah." Because why he cried out that son of David was, it was believed among the Jews that through David line lineage, messiah would come. So now this blind fellow, this blind beggar. He understood this Jesus of Nazareth. He cries out, "Hey guys, for him, Jesus for you is a master, but for me, he is a messiah." What a wonderful day! Who is Jesus? For a beggar who could not see. For a beggar, an unknown fellow knows he is a messiah. No education, no qualification, never went to school, never had an exposure, not even see anything. But he could feel that Jesus is a messiah. and the way he was shouting people were saying hey guy don't shout don't shout imagine why these people were trying to keep the beggar silent why were they telling the beggar to keep silent they were saying hey guy don't shout this fellow was really shouting out son of david have mercy on me in this child the crowd had no sympathy for this they did not feel anything for the shout of the blind fellow did not matter anything for them it did not pain them it did not anyway move their hearts but he could move one heart whose heart was it Jesus heart. Many times 
you may fail in your life. Many a times, like that crowd, people might be indifferent to you. You are crying. Many times, people may be your friends, may be indifferent to your agony. Many a times, people, your neighbors, may be indifferent to your problem that you are going through. Nobody has ever cared for your cries like a crowd. But do not worry, there is one who hears your agony. There is one who is there to answer your agony. What happened to this agony of this blind fellow, the beggar, when he was shouting, Jesus of not Nazareth, but Jesus, son of David. Have mercy on me. This guy stop Jesus to go for them. Never Jesus thought that he would stop there. But the claim of the beggar stopped Jesus there. Do not worry. In your pain, in your agony, in your sorrow. In your depressed life, in your stressed life, when you cry out somewhere, there is one who stops by. Your friends may leave you. Your brothers and sisters may run away from you. People may know to not think about or bother about you. But cheer up, there is one who stands there. It is Jesus Christ. The word of God said, Jesus stood there. His agony, the blind beggar's agony, made Jesus to stand there. And not only that, when Jesus stood there, he told the fellows who made him to keep quiet, the people who made him to keep quiet, Lord Jesus tells the same people, go and call him. Go and call him. They went and called him. He came. He did not give an excuse. Hey, how can I see? I'm a blind fellow. I don't know where I have to walk. He didn't say anything. He just obediently said, Yes, I will come. They went and, went and told him, Hey, guy, Jesus is calling you. You all sing that lovely song. Jesus calls us all. Jesus calls us all. For he beckons on him to rely. Jesus calls us all. Jesus calls. somebody in trouble, when Jesus hears somebody crying out, he says, come. You may be no, have nobody on this earth who says come. But there is one this night who has a passion for you, who has a passion to embrace the suffering. Embrace who is crying. Embrace who are going through stress in life. And not only that, Jesus, when all these people, the crowd was interested not in the crowd, they were interested in getting wisdom. They were interested in getting knowledge from Jesus. They were not interested in this beggar. But your brothers and sisters, Jesus was interested in that Jesus was interested in that man. Today, your brothers and sisters may not be interested in you. Today, your children may not be interested about you. Nobody are interested in regarding you. But here, 
Jesus is interested in you. The devil was not interested, but Jesus was interested. When he's interested, you know, we did something for him. He said, Come. Whenever Jesus says to come, he wants to bless you someday. He calls you to come so that he can give you something. And this is a wonderful thing that nowhere in the Bible you ever see Jesus asking the person, What do you want me to do? Well, he never said, When Jesus asked this question, What do you want me to do, man? He never said, Give me a Mercedes car. He never said, Give me a BMW car. No, he never said, Give me a house in Jubilee Hills. Or he never said, Give me an apartment in a Banjara Hills. He never said, Make me a give me a chief minister. He never said that. He said, Lord, give me a sight. I want to see. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. Open my eyes, Lord. I want to see Jesus. To reach out and touch Him. To say that I love Him. He just said, Lord. Open my eyes. He asked what he needed, but he never asked his greed. Jesus always gives you what you need, but never gives your greed. This night, God reminds you when Jesus asked you, Daughter, what do you want me to do? Son, what do you want me to do? You ask what you need. But don't ever ask your greed. God will not answer that. And Jesus did heal that man. He opened his eyes and healed him. My dear brothers and sisters, the same mouth that shouted, Son of David, have mercy on me. That same mouth, if you believe in verse 43, Luke chapter 18, verse 43, he was praising God. The same mouth that was filled with agony, the same mouth that was shouting for mercy, the same mouth that was, you know, expressing his pain, his, you know, depression. That same mouth that was expressing, you know, deep sorrow of his blindness. That same mouth, you see in verse 33, he began to praise God. That's what you are going to experience this evening. He's going to turn your heart into praises. A heart of disturbed, a heart of frustrated, a heart of pain, a heart of agony. You know, everything God turned out, Jesus turned out him to be a heart of praise. Do you want that experience this evening? It's not only the Lord who did a wonder there on the roads of Jericho. He is a good Lord Jesus who can do that even in this church, even the place where you are sitting. We are such a wonderful Jesus who can turn your cries into praises. Not only that, he was a beggar. He was a dependent. He depends on somebody's arms. If somebody gives them, he has to live on them. But when Jesus came inside, he was no more a dependent. He began to lead a life on his own. He began to lead a life on his own. He never lived again on the mercy of somebody. The mercy of God is so great that it makes you to live independently. How are you living at somebody's mercy this evening? This blind fellow was leading the life of mercy of some 
people who gives you some money. But Jesus' mercy is so great, it will make you to live the life on your own. You will become an independent life. God can give you that. Ask God, Lord, today I live a life on mercy of somebody. I'm bound with this kind of life. In your mercy, I want to experience something more. Even I really wonder about this blind fellow. He could have said, Son of David, open my eyes. He could have said. But he didn't say that. He said, Son of David, have mercy on me. Why did this blind fellow say, to have mercy on me? There's a lot of secret. Dear brothers and sisters, this blind bit of that healing is under the umbrella of mercy. Mercy is greater than healing. One day, in a kingdom where a king was ruling, suddenly mother was a widow. Heard that her son was caught in a crime and he was taken by the soldiers to the king. And on the way, some people ran to this mother, this boy's mother, and said, Madam, your son is caught in a crime and he is being taken to the king by the soldiers. Mother immediately stood up, ran to the king's palace. And by then, the minister was explaining to the king what kind of a crime this young boy did. And mother was hearing all that was being told. And after everything was told, the king was about to pass a judgment. The mother said, King, I'm a widow. I have no husband. All that I have is my only son. Please well, forgive him, King. Please forgive him. As the mother was pleading for forgiveness, the king forgave the child. Following a few months, this young boy was again caught in that same time. He was being brought to the king again. Some people gave it to the mother, and the mother immediately ran to the king's palace. The minister was telling about this crime and about this young fellow in a very shrewd way where he would be really punished this time. And the minister was saying, King, no mercy on him. No question of forgiveness this time. You have to punish him. And after everything the minister said, the mother immediately said, King, she was making a action and bleed. The king said, don't ever ask forgiveness this time. I will not forgive him. Please do not ask for forgiveness. The mother said, King, I did not come to ask forgiveness, but I have come to ask to show your grace. I have come to ask your grace. Immediately King said, yes, in my grace there is always forgiveness. He said, my grace is there for yes. That's why this blind fellow's cry was, Son of David, have mercy on me. Jesus did in his small grace have his healing for him. In God's grace, there is something that you are going through. There is a blessing for you. What is that? You are in need of this night. As the beggar was in need of his sight. Is there something that you are lacking in your life? Is there something that you are going through a need? Is something there is a, in your life that you are longing for? Right up, something. Have 
mercy, the compassion of God in His mercy has every blessing for you. May the Lord who showed His compassion and passion to the blind beggar. Bless you. God bless you.